Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will complete the proof of this uh, structure theorem of finite abelian groups. So, let us actually uh, start with some preparatory results. So, let uh, as before G be a finite abelian group. I will split the proof into some small small uh, uh, facts. Okay. So, let us start with the first uh, fact 1. So, it says uh, if you have a uh, 2 subgroups let us say H and K or subgroups of G such that uh, the order of H and order of K they are relatively prime. The GCD of order of H and order of K if this is 1. So, then the H intersection K must be trivial. Okay. So, why this is true? So, let us start with X inside our H intersection K. So, then what we know from Lagrange's theorem that order of H must divide order of H intersection K. But since H intersection K is a subgroup, okay. H intersection K is a subgroup of H as well as K. Again using Lagrange's theorem, you can see that. So, using by Lagrange's theorem, you can see that order of H intersection K divides R of H and R of K. So, that means this order of X divides order of H and order of K. So, then what will happen because they do not have anything uh, common. So, the GCD of order of H and order of K is 1. So, that forces that this order of X must be 1. So, order of X must be 1. So, that will imply X is identity. So, this proves that H intersection K must be identity. So, now uh, let us uh, look at how one can use uh, if you have subgroups whose intersection is identity. So, here is fact 2. So, let H and K both are subgroups of G and G is uh, fixed to be finite abelian group such that H intersection K is let us say identity. So, now uh, what one can do? One can define this uh, natural homomorphism from H cross K to G. Okay. There is this phi, you can define the homomorphism from H cross K to G as follows. What is this? Phi of H comma K map to which is equal to the product H K. Okay. Now, since G is abelian, one can check that this map must be homomorphism. Now, since H intersection K is identity, this must be actually injective homomorphism. So, I will leave it to you to check this is indeed homomorphism. So, let me check it is injective. Suppose H K is same as H dash K dash, then that would imply that H dash inverse H is equal to k dash times k inverse, but which will be inside H intersection k because this is in H and this is in k. So, that forces that both these elements are identity that forces that H equal to H dash and k dash equal to k. So, this proves this phi is indeed injective homomorphism injective homomorphism. So, now uh, in case if you assume that uh, okay, so this is a immediate corollary in case if you know that the cardinality of G is same as the cardinality of H times cardinality of K. So, then G must be isomorphic to H cross K. So, that is because this map must be 
any injective map from one set to another set both are having same cardinality must be bijective map. So, this phi becomes bijective so it must it becomes isomorphism. So, that is immediate corollary from this ok. <coughs> now, let us reprove Silo's theorem in this setting ok. You have this finite abelian group of order n and let us say p divides n. So, where n is n is your uh, order of g and g is given to be finite abelian group. So, what we want? We want silo p subgroup ok. What is the property of silo p subgroup? Let us say p power e is the highest exponent that actually divides r of g. So, e is the maximum exponent such that p power e divides order of g. So, that means p power e plus 1 does not divide r of g ok. So, then Silo's theorem guarantees that there is a subgroup of order p power e. Now, if you think about it you can actually give this characterization for that uh, subgroup. So, this is those elements x in g such that this order of x indeed is a power of this uh, prime power p is a power of p. So, including like uh, trivial power p power 0 is also allowed. So, that means order of x equal to some p power alpha where alpha greater or equal to 0. So, that is what we say. So, if you take silo group subgroup then uh, you can see that that silo subgroup all the elements of the silo subgroup must satisfy this property ok. But in this case uh, one can define this there is no issue that uh, uh, h being a subset of G such that those elements such that R of x is a prime power uh, p power alpha for alpha greater than or equal to 0. So, now what we claim in this case this is the silo p subgroup indeed h is a subgroup of G and this h must have cardinality p power e. So, these two things uh, we will actually verify in this case ok. So, maybe it is uh, more intuitive to, to call this h as g of p. So, let us call it uh, g of p because depending upon the prime p. So, g of p is a subgroup and the cardinality of g of p is p power e that is what we want to prove. So, let us see how one can prove. So, proving it is a subgroup is easy start with uh, two elements x y in g of p. So, then look at uh, the order of x it is going to be some p power alpha order of y is going to be p power beta. So, then order of y is same as order of y inverse. So, that is what uh, it is going to be p power beta. So, now if you look at x y inverse power p power alpha plus beta. So, then you are going to get exactly x power p power alpha plus beta times y inverse power p power alpha plus beta and both alpha plus beta is going to be greater than or equal to both alpha and beta ok. So, that means this is identity and this is also identity those this is going to be identity. So, this proves x y inverse order also must be some p power gamma for gamma greater than or equal to g. So, this proves x y inverse is in g of p and g of p is indeed a subgroup of g. Now, we want to say that g of p must be having some prime power uh, sorry p power e exactly for that exponent e ok. So, this is the exponent highest exponent of this prime power p. So, why that is the case? So, first of all we claim that the order of g power p must be some p power 
gamma okay for some gamma again gamma has to be less than or equal to e why that is the case because if some other prime divides this let us say q say q is some other prime divides the cardinality of g power p. So, then what happens using Cauchy's theorem again Cauchy's theorem we verified it for finite abelian groups what it says if some prime number divides the order of the group then there exists an element x in this g of p such that order of x equal to q but which is not of the prime power because this uh, the by description of g of p all elements must have some p power some gamma dash but this is a contradiction because q and p are distinct primes okay so if so p is not equal to q which is contradiction so that forces that there is no other prime that divides this cardinality of g of p so that means the cardinality of g g of p must be this that particular prime p power something and uh, since g of p is a subgroup of g so the cardinality of g of p must divide the cardinality of g so that forces that this p power gamma divides the cardinality of g so that forces that gamma must be at most e so this is immediate from cauchy's theorem so now uh, again we will uh, use cauchy's theorem to ensure that gamma must be equal to e so let's say gamma is strictly is the e okay so then what I, what we can do i can go modulo this g of p since g is abelian any subgroup is uh, normal so g of p is a normal subgroup of g so i can take this g modulo g of p now note that <coughs> the cardinality of this has to be p power e minus gamma times something okay call it a e minus gamma must be greater than or equal to 1 by our assumption so now again we can use cauchy's theorem so what cauchy's theorem says since p divides g modulo g power p order that implies there exists an element x g of p inside g modulo g power p such that the order of x g of p is exactly equal to p but what does it mean this means x power p must be element of g of p okay because x g power p is a coset so it has order p means x power p must be having this uh, <coughs> must be element of g of p so now if you take x power p power p power gamma okay so that is going to be exactly equal to x power p power gamma plus 1 so this must be identity okay because the cardinality of gp is exactly p power gamma so any element of that g power p if you raise it power the cardinality of g of p that must be identity so in particularly this says the order of x must be p power something okay so that means x is inside g of p by definition of g of p g of p those elements in g such that order of g is prime power p power alpha alpha greater than equal to 0 okay so since this r of x is of this form p power star for some star greater than or equal to 0 so that forces x is in g of p that means x g p is trivial okay that means x g p is g p but uh, but we by our choice this x g p having order p 
which is also a trivial element which is a contradiction. So, that says that this g of p must have order p power e. So, that means this g of p is our silo p group. Okay. So, the existence of silo p group is somewhat trivial. Once you know the Cauchy's theorem, then we will be able to produce this uh, existence of silo p group in the finite abelian group. That is because we are allowed to go modulo any subgroup, there is no issue. Okay. So, you can actually think about proving this uh, silo theorems for the finite abelian groups uh, without uh, much trouble. Okay. The proof that we used uh, uses this group action, but now knowing that you can go modulo any subgroup because all the subgroups are normal, somewhat uh, reduces your argument. Uh, via induction. Okay. So, now using induction on the finite abelian groups any quotient of finite abelian group is going to be again finite abelian group using all those information you can actually write down some somewhat simpler proof for the silo theorems in the case of abelian groups. Okay. Indeed that is what we have done here, but I am just uh, emphasizing that. Okay. Now, if you take is various primes okay let's say the cardinality of g is n which is p1 power e1 etc pr power er so then what happens if you look at this g of p1 cross etc cross g of pr so this is going to sit inside your g okay so this is naturally uh, follows from uh, uh, the fact that we proved earlier. So, what is the fact that we proved if you have h and k such that h intersection k is identity then there is a natural injective homomorphism from h cross k to g. And not only that if you have a h k both uh, having uh, relatively prime order then h intersection k must be identity. So, this says that if you take this uh, g of p i and then look at all other product okay look at g of p i and then intersection with those uh, all other uh, g of p j j not equal to i. So, this will be a subgroup because we are in the abelian case we do not need to worry about taking the product. So, if you take these two subgroups then the intersection must be trivial because this has order p i power e i and this has order product p j power e j where j not equal to. So, that means uh, they they have relatively prime orders. So, that means intersection should be identity and since it is true for all i from 1 to r. So, if you look at this Cartesian product or the direct product of this uh, uh, these subgroups then that must live inside g injectively. Now, since G has same order as this uh, P1, E1, etc., P R, E R, that forces that G must be isomorphic to G of P1, direct product, etc., G of P R. Okay. So, whatever we promised in the last lecture that uh, from Silo's theorem, we got exactly this kind of uh, product. So, we have reproved it using just uh, simply Cauchy's theorem. Okay, so, now what is the upshot so far? So, if we have g, let us say the cardinality of g is n which is e product of these primes p1, e1, etc., p r, e r. So, this is the prime factorization. Okay. So, now given p which divides the cardinality of g, you define what is called this g of p which is those x in g such that R of x is some prime yeah, p power alpha for some alpha greater than or equal to 0. Then we observe that g is naturally isomorphic to g of p1 cross etc cross g of pr. So, this is what we have proved so far. So, any finite abelian group can be written as product of p groups. So, that is what it says. So, this is called the primary decomposition theorem. Okay, this is called 
primary decomposition theorem so which asserts g can be written as direct product of p groups okay so now uh, what we are going to do we are going to only focus on p group okay p group means a group that has some prime power p so now uh, once you assume that uh, your uh, group is uh, uh, having prime power p power e so then if we prove that uh, uh, if we prove the structure theorem for this kind of groups then we are done because any group can be written as product of this p groups and the given p group is if it is product of uh, a prime a cyclic group of order prime powers okay so then uh, putting them together we get that any finite abelian group is product of uh, cyclic groups of a prime order okay so how one can prove this so here is the baby version of the theorem so if g is p power e and of obviously g is given to be finite abelian so then we claim that g is isomorphic to z modulo some p power beta 1 z cross etc cross z modulo p power beta r z where you can choose the exponents so that you can write it in the increasing order and this is a partition of this e okay so with uh, with this condition so this is also uniquely determined so moreover this tuple beta 1 etc beta r or the partition so which is denoted by like this partition of e is uniquely determined by g okay so we have such uh, exponents beta 1 etc beta r which is which form a partition of e and this partition is uniquely determined by g g that's what it says so from this it's immediate that uh, g can be written as product of uh, cyclic groups of uh, prime power orders okay so and we will also actually verify the uniqueness on the way okay so we want to actually uh, prove this but if you think about it uh, so what uh, this theorem immediately implies okay for example this actually uh tells something about uh, these exponents okay so we need to actually uh, tell you how to pick this exponents beta 1 etc beta r so otherwise uh, uh, we won't be able to actually proceed further na so but if you think about it these beta i's they have some uh, very important property for example how the beta 1 chosen so let's think about it so the beta 1 okay so this is the highest power of p that appear here okay so that means so this is a cyclic group this is z modulo p power beta 1 is it so if you take the cyclic generator of that so then the order of that cyclic generator is going to be p power beta 1 but if you think about it if you take any element of g okay so if you take any element of g because uh, that can be written as some x1 etc xr okay so any element x in g assuming that this is isomorphic to z modulo p power beta 1 z cross etc cross z modulo p power beta r z okay so you can see that uh, this x can be written as x1 etc xr so now what will be the order the order of this is going to be lcm of order of x1 etc order of xr 
okay. At least the order of x must divide this, okay. One can check because the orders are p powers, you can check that this is going to be the case. So that means, so at least for for sure this order of x will divide this LCM. Now from this you can see that this has to divide the p power beta 1, okay. So that means any element of G whose order, okay, order of any element of that, order of any element of G must divide this p power beta 1. So you choose this beta 1 such that, so that is the highest possible order of any element of G, okay. That means p beta 1 is nothing but maximum of order of G where G in G. So this is what called exponent of G. So this is called exponent of G and exponent of G can be defined for any finite abelian groups, no issue because we have only finitely many elements. You look at all possible orders of that and then take maximum. So then you can see that this p power beta 1 is exactly captured by this exponent exponent of G. So that is how you capture this beta 1. Then how do you capture beta 2 and so on? We will see over, over the proof, okay. So you have to look at PG and then try to do it. But, uh, but we can see that this exponent naturally appears. So let us make uh, some comment about the exponent, okay. I will actually prove a very uh, simple lemma about the exponent. So here is the proof. So this is actually true for any finite abelian groups, okay. So let uh, G be a finite abelian group, okay. So G is a finite abelian group. So then we can define what is called this M which is also called exponent of G. So this is going to be the maximum order of elements of G possible. So this uh, max of order of G where G comes from capital G. So then what one can prove? So order of X divides this M for all X in G, okay. Once you define this exponent, then the order of any element of G must divide the exponent of G. So what is the proof? So the proof is very simple. So let uh, x in G such that order of x let us say does not divide M, okay. We will get the contradiction. So choose A in G such that order of A equal to M because this is maximum among finitely many. So it, it is at, attained. So you choose A in G such that order of A is M. So now you have this order of x does not divide M. So that means there exists a prime divisor P of order of x such that P power R will divide order of x but P power R cannot divide M. So that means some power of P divides M but the power S should be strictly less than R, okay. So you can choose a prime P which divides R of X but not, so the some power of that P does not divide, uh, yeah, the correct power of that does not divide M. So you call like P power R divides R of X, P power S divides M. So you can choose such a way that S is less than R. So now if you look at the order of this a power p s. So what is this? This is going to be order of a divided by the g c d of order of a comma p power s. So this is going to be order of a is m and since p power s divides m, so the g c d between them is p power s. 
So, this is exactly m divided by p power s. Similarly, the order of x power okay, order of x divided by p power r is going to be just uh, p power r because this is going to be order of x divided by again GCD of order of x comma p power r. So, sorry order of x divided by p power r. Uh, so, that is going to be just order of x divided by order of x divided by p power r which is p power r. Okay. So, now you can see that p power r and this m divided by p power s. So, they must be relatively prime because p power s is the highest power that divides m. So, this must be relatively prime. So, that means you have uh, this uh, elements x power r of x divided by p power r and this another element a p power s. Okay. So, both are actually commuting elements and both the orders they are relatively prime. So, then the order of this is going to be order of a power p power s and order of x power r of x divided by p power r. So, which is going to be exactly equal to m divided by p power s times p power r. So, which is going to be m times p power r minus s. But we have assumed r is greater than s that implies r minus s is greater than or equal to 1. So, that means this m times p power r minus s is strictly greater than m. So, if we have produced one element inside G whose order is more than m, but that is a contradiction because m is the maximum order possible. So, that is called exponent of G. Okay. So, you cannot have something else that can be actually crosses this order. So, that proves that this m has this property that order of x divides m which is exponent of g for all x in g. Okay. So, now using this we will be able to pick our beta 1 when you apply it for finite uh, abelian p group. Okay. So, I will actually uh, continue the proof in the next class. So, we need to actually uh, just say how to pick this beta 1, beta 2, etcetera, beta r. So, indeed we will use induction and then say that uh, more or less how we are choosing beta 1 is the same way we choose beta 2 and so on in the somewhat smaller group. Okay, That way we will be able to choose this uh, uh, partition beta 1, etcetera, beta r such that uh, g is isomorphic to this z modulo p power beta 1 z etcetera direct product etcetera z modulo p power beta r. So, I will complete the proof in the next class I will stop here.